saying one of the things that they would be thankful for is that Allah guided them to Islam. So somebody had mentioned that <laughs> somebody had mentioned that your understanding was called up to be wrong because you have the freedom of choice. So which causes some confusion here to the person that asked me to ask this question. So now it's like we know okay, that Allah so what is the question? So somebody was saying they're thankful that Allah guided them to Islam. Someone was saying they're thankful that Allah guided them to Islam. Okay. So the, the answer to that was you're understanding the qadr wrong because you have the freedom of choice. So the understanding is does is it يعني Allah يهدي من يشاء ويضل من يشاء does that mean that Allah chose for us to be Muslims and chose for the non-Muslims to be Muslims? So the person who answered him does not want him to thank Allah for guidance? Um, I don't want to say it that way, but they're saying you understand. <laughs> they're saying you're understanding qadr wrong that you have the free choice, and uh, it's not. You know, I guess the way I'm understanding is they're saying it's not the Allah that you know that guided you or chose for the misguided to be misguided. You have the choice to be guided and not to be misguided. But we know there's ayat in the Quran that says Allah guides who wills and misguides who wills, and you know a lot of I don't know if it's a hadith, but I don't know if it's a hadith. Yes, Allah, yeah. The, the understanding of Ahl Sunnah is that, you know, you have, you have a will that is superseded by Allah's will, right? Okay, so you have this mic in your hand, and then you say, I will put this mic down on the ground on my right side that is like a determination for in the future and then you say inshallah why do you say inshallah because if allah did not will it the roof will collapse your your your, your hand will stop something will happen right. you will get distracted someone will yell in the back and or scream or a window will break and then you will get distracted something will happen but you say inshallah, and then you act upon it, and then you do do it. This means I, I am willful, and you know I can act upon my will. So this is enough to make me responsible for my actions. Just being able to do this is enough to make me responsible for my actions. The fact that Allah's will supersedes my will does not make me an unwillful or incapable of making determinations, of an, a creature that is incapable of making determinations, because if I am not capable of making the, you know, determinations, then how would I be punished for my you know, uh, actions? I have enough will to be responsible. It is superseded by Allah's overarching will. To understand that, to have complete comprehension of this concept is beyond us. Is beyond us. Because at the end, you keep on telling yourself that if his will supersedes my will, then at the end of the day, my will is controlled by his will. Because the Sahaba asked the Prophet that, right? Yes, and then he said, mm -hmm. So act for everyone will be will have the path to what to his destination facilitated for him. Everyone will have the path to his destination facilitated for him. Uh, but you act. And the fact that I am you see, I am capable of saying this, right? Yes. I will bring this up. And and I do bring it up. I will bring it back down, inshallah. I do bring it back down. So it means I make a determination, I act upon it, no one is obstructing me. The same applies to your salah or to your uh, acts of righteousness or wickedness. Mm -hmm. You make a determination, you act upon it, no one obstructs you. This is enough to say that you're responsible. This is enough to say that you're accountable. And that's it. And don't get into the philosophy of this because it is not pertinent and it is a waste of time because at the end of the day you're here you're being tested 
This is like one of our Messiah used to say, it's like you're sitting in the classroom, the, the teacher the walks in, gives you like a surprise exam, you know, everybody gets out their answer sheets, you know, or if you want to argue about the fairness or unfairness of the exam, it's up to you. You could argue. Sit down and argue about, you know, the surprise that's being unfair. But at the end of the class, at the end of this one hour, you will be graded, whether you liked it or not. It is happening, brothers. We are here. We are being tried. We are being tested. So if you want to sit down and talk about the fairness of the test and argue about the fairness of the test, you would not, no one would force you not to. But at the end of the day, who, who's going to be the loser? The, the people who sit down and argue but if you are whether, whether or not it's fair. The people who worked and answered are the ones who have some sort. But if you are up in prayer, you can't think, if you're making tahajjud, for example, you can't thank Allah for choosing to have you awake in the middle of the night while others are sleeping. You, you can thank him that he... Uh, well, absolutely, it is. Without Allah, you would have not been able to make it. Anything, yes. Uh, so certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Prophet clearly told them, No one will enter paradise because of his own, by his own deeds. Even you, O Messenger of Allah, even me, except if Allah bestows his mercy on me. So it, 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 you have to thank Allah for, for the guidance and for the support and the power that he gave you to act upon this guidance also.